how to paint realistic rocks so that they have the texture, the volume, the reflections on their wet surface and also how to capture that water, the waves smashing into the rocks. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of how I'm approaching this. So let's begin. First, let's create the interesting shape of the rocks. I love how it goes on diagonal through the page, so it makes it more dynamic. It's great when I know right from the beginning what to emphasize in my picture, what the center of interest is going to be. Here, of course, it is this crashing wave and it's the strongest area of contrast, basically. This white or almost white foam against this darker wet rock. So the eye definitely goes to that right away. And you probably noticed that my crushing wave is quite a bit larger than what we see in the picture. And that's where my artistic license comes in, because I can redesign certain elements if it improves my composition, if it creates a better visual story. It's not all just about that big splash. There's plenty of interest within the rocks themselves and I want to show that. I want to show the difference between the dry surface of the rock and the wet surface of the rock that picks up the reflection from the sky. For this demo, I'm using a beige mid-tone paper. You can use the paper from a Canson pad. I would suggest to use the reverse side because it doesn't have that annoying honeycomb pattern. And here it's just more like a sketching paper. It still holds the pastel. You can also use toned sanded paper like Art Spectrum Color Fix or Canson Touch. And you could use actually maybe a little bit darker color for this. But because mine is sort of lighter mid-tone, I'll have to darken the areas of the wet rock. And the reason I want to do this because otherwise that lighter color of the background is going to dilute the darker colors at the top. So it is easier at this stage to just blend the darker color, whether it's pastel or charcoal, into the paper and that creates that darker underlying color. So that later when I start layering darker pastels on top of it, it's the darker color that's showing through, the darker value. And it's not going to kind of compete with that darker pastel. And I'm using right now the bind charcoal, it's the softer charcoal. It's not really that thicker black charcoal because I like to have a little bit more transparency there because when you blend it, you can see you still see the color of the paper a little bit. So I like that. I don't want to make the underlying background completely black. And also while I'm doing this, I'm trying to emphasize that striation, I think it's called, within the rock those areas that are diagonal, kind of a little bit more parallel maybe. And finally, when I have that darker area set up, now I can start layering my pastels, my softer pastels on top of it. Usually I go pretty much right to softer brands of pastels if I'm working on a non-sanded paper because this paper is not going to take a lot of layers. So it's better to get right to the colors, kind of combinations of colors that I want to see there. I start with the darkest colors. This particular one seems to be the Terry Ludwig eggplant or some other very close to it color. And then I also want to add maybe a little bit more red, darker color. And I also keep blending them. At this point, it's fine. Though usually I'm not blending too much. At least not in the top layers, but here, because I'm still kind of setting up the foundation for the final marks or for the later marks that I will leave alone. Here, it's just uh, nice to create that richer 
color for the underlying layers. And if you squint your eyes right now, it's just overall darker area. And also at this point, I start adding a little bit of a variation within the colors. And I set up that darker area, which is kind of purple and dark burgundy and browns. And now for the lighter, for more sunlit areas or for the drier areas, I'm using maybe like ochres so that there's definitely that distinction between the more wet area that's right next to the water and the rock, the area of the rock that's at the top. And also maybe like some darker, duller greens as well. So it's usually a combination of colors. It's not just kind of take one color and that will do it for that specific value. Also on the rocks, we have some moss, some maybe vegetation growing, whatever that's called, seaweeds, not sure. So that greenish color kind of is a hint at that. And as I'm working, of course, I keep losing the initial shapes and I have to redefine them. So that darkest color, that Terry Ludwig eggplant is showing up again and again to emphasize those cracks, those cracked surfaces in the stone. And here it would be impossible to try to get every tiny detail within the rock. So what I'm usually trying to do is just to pick up the rhythm, the rhythm of those striations within the rock. So if it's maybe diagonals following certain way and then just introduce some interesting detail within that. And at some point, maybe it's becoming too much if you start just kind of adding those lines again and again and it might get too much so you might want to go back and combine some of those lines again to calm that texture so now that i build up some interesting color within the rock and it's not final of course but still now i can start working on the water and of course we have the foam, a lot of foam right next to the rocks, but it's not what I'm starting with. At first I'm trying to set up the color that we're going to see through the foam. And in the distance it's kind of more blue color, so I will have the contrast of that area with the foreground area. So let's get the sky and right now it's kind of boring, that boring edge in the distance. So I usually don't like to have it that sharp, that horizon line. So I would like to soften it. And now with that blue, you can see it definitely pushed the depth, created more depth within the picture. And I like that. And also working lightly on the side of the stick there in the distance, it just created some of that kind of blue shimmering color, that texture that suggests maybe those waves in the distance, just the surface of the water picking up that blue from the sky, reflecting that blue from the sky. And that's why we see that in the distance, but closer to us, we are going to see more of a bottom of the ocean, of the sea, whatever that is. Well, this is the ocean, but we're going to see more of the color of the bottom. And that's going to be maybe like more green or maybe more brown, whatever we see through the water. So it's going to be a little bit warmer color, not as blue. So that's why there's the difference. And also with the blue, with the marks, how I'm making the marks within the water, 
right now I'm working on the rocks, but I'm kind of behind with my explanations a little bit. But the way I'm making marks on the water, I emphasize like more horizontal surfaces. So that implies there are some waves and parts of those more oriented towards the sky, others not so much. So what's with the rocks? Why I used blue? Well, because the wet rock is going to reflect the sky. So that purple that was underneath, that was the nice foundation of the wet rock. But the blue that I was using, the darker blue now, that is showing the reflection of the sky in the wet rock. So that's what it is. And also I was using more linear marks to kind of, again, to emphasize those striations in the rock, cracks within the rock. But at the same time, I can also just use the side of the pastel stick and put that light glaze over that area. And that's just going to be a nice variation. And on top of the rock as well, even in the dry area, we have some of the water. And that's why I have that blue. And that is again blue because it's reflecting the sky. Right now, these are the basic shapes and the basic colors though with some variations already but now I'm going to start creating a little bit more depth within the rock as well so that the further away rocks don't stand out as much and the way to do it will be to have a little bit more contrast a little bit more chromatic color within the rocks that are closer to us in the foreground in the middle ground and a little bit less contrast and a little bit less saturated, a little bit less chromatic colors and a little bit cooler colors further away. That will emphasize the depth, the atmospheric perspective. And that's something to keep in mind. And even if the photo that I'm working from is not really showing it as well, I can still do that and my picture will read a little bit less flat. So here right now the brown or gray color that I'm using that's kind of working towards that and definitely works in the distance but I'm going to use that color in the areas that are closer as well a little bit so that I have that nice unity within the picture but overall I do want to use less chromatic more neutral more toned down color in the distance it can still be warmer but it's not going to be as chromatic as what i'm going to end up with closer to us and even though that texture within the rock kind of reads okay because we have texture in the rock to begin with and that light paper showing through in this lower left corner but i just want to build up more color
I want to build some of these oranges into the rock, particularly closer to us and maybe even a little bit in the distance, just a hint, but definitely closer. And it is a nice orange color, but at the same time, it's kind of more neutral. It's not your bright orange. And some parts of the rock are a little bit lighter. And I think this lighter, kind of yellowish or lighter ochre color works well for that. And again, more chromatic color closer to us. So this one definitely has more chroma than that sort of yellowish gray that I was using in the distance. And again, that to emphasize the depth. And that water that we see on top of the rock that's reflecting the sky, it has a little bit of a dark outline on the side where it's in the shadow. So I want to show that. I want to show that it's not just sitting flat. So there's, of course, more going back and forth with the cracks in the stone because I constantly keep losing track of that because I keep adding colors on top of it, on top of that darker color and it kind of eliminates those darker, indents, darker areas. So I have to find them back, bring them back constantly. And now those beautiful grays and I can use them closer to me as well to tone down that orange. You can definitely see how I added more color overall into my rocks as opposed to the reference picture. Also, we can see the difference between the wet area of the rocks and the dry area of the rocks. And we can see that there's more saturated, more chromatic color in the wet rocks. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And that's why I'm adding some of those more intense, kind of darker, orangey red colors into the wet rocks area just to make them a little bit more interesting too. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Please give it a like. And this way, YouTube will also know that they should show it to more people. And now it's the time to do something about the water. And because I have the foundation for my waves, for the foam, now I can start adding a little bit more texture with these lighter turquoise colors and eventually with the lighter color of the foam. The water also is kind of finding its way here between the rocks in the lower right area. But I want to be careful there so that I don't end up with a very sharply outlined kind of passage of the water. And now it's time to start bringing in the foam. I want to add movement with my marks. And I'm not going to use just white. Like here I have two blues, one is a little bit darker, but still very light blue. And then the lightest one will be for the highlights on the foam. And this way I'm going to create texture and it's not going to look flat. I want to show that the water is rushing in towards the shore. So I'm using my marks in a certain direction. And here between the rocks, for example, it slows down and the marks are becoming kind of longer, slower. Also, the foam is a nice leading element in the composition. 
and here I can use a little bit of it in the distance but I'll make sure it's not the brightest in the distance and now I can start building that exciting foam splash and I did reserve some of that area of the rock it is lighter I also wanted to keep it cleaner so that when I just drag my pastel stick on the flat side over that area it doesn't really pick up much of that darker color from the underneath so it's easier to keep it nicer and also when I'm building that foam burst I want to give it a little bit of volume so it's not just all white color the lightest color but in some areas where it's away, turned away from the sun, the opposite side, it is a little bit darker. So on the left side, that foam burst is going to have a little bit more turquoise or blue, maybe something like that. And maybe I also want to show a little bit the water inside the rocks, uh, kind of here in between the rocks, to separate them a little bit from this main rock shape of the rock. And also to just keep refining the area of the foam and maybe softening some edges eventually. And also an interesting detail is when the water is rolling off the rock, so that could be also exciting. I could use the foam spray here, the toothbrush to create that foam spray, but I decided not to. It's just an exercise, just a quick kind of exploration of the subject. So just dragging very lightly the light pastel stick over the surface and upwards, kind of releasing it so that it has that feathering effect that worked that created that foam splash and now with this darker purple I want to suggest a little bit more of that reflection from the sky that again got lost maybe a little bit while I was going back and forth with browns and blues and other colors so a little bit of this at the top and maybe a little bit more blue later so it's a constant kind of refinement of the color at this point and I don't want to go too far like I think the water is pretty much where it should be and the rocks Again, yes, pretty much where I want them to be, but now with this blue, I want to show the surface of the rocks where we have that brighter reflection, brighter blue reflection of the sky. And maybe to show how those planes of the rock are separated from each other. So something like that. maybe a little bit of that greener darker duller green color to push the darker areas so it's not just all kind of purples dark purples so that we have some earthier color here as well and again to remember not to start adding too much sharp edged detail in the distance I want that to look softer And very close to getting this finished now. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really helps me a lot to have my videos seen by more people.
look at this blue how it really picks up that sky color when I add it also at the time of making this video I'm working on a larger self-study course that is going to have several videos on this very subject coastline rocky coastline crashing waves and all that interesting stuff this course will include several demos longer and more detailed demos and also a few examples with a wet underpainting technique which is really great for the seascapes I will be announcing the best special price for this course, the pre-launch price. And if you don't want to miss it, please sign up for my newsletter and the link is in the description below. And if you watch this video later, when the course is already published, I will have the link to the course in the description below. So either way, check it out if you are interested in this subject. And I hope you check out my other Seascape videos here on YouTube. And thank you for watching and I will see you next time.